This tutorial video introduces the magnetic calibration procedures available for your MTI product. A proper magnetic calibration is essential for MTI products that support a magnetic or north-referenced heading output. Altitude and heading reference systems, such as the MTI-3, MTI-30, and MTI-300, can use their magnetometers to estimate the heading by determining their orientation with respect to the magnetic north. However, in presence of magnetic objects or additional magnetic fields, it can be difficult for the MTI to distinguish between these disturbances and the Earth's magnetic field. This will result in an error in the estimated heading. A magnetic calibration can be performed in order to reduce the impact of these distortions on the magnetic heading estimate of your MTI. There are various types of magnetic disturbances. We distinguish between distortions that move with the sensor, such as when the sensor is fixed to a large ship or aircraft, or when there are batteries nearby, and on the other hand, distortions that do not move with the sensor, for example when navigating through a building with ferromagnetic objects, or time-varying distortions. The Magnetic Field Mapper, or MFM in short, is the main tool that should be used to account for distortions of the first category. In-Run Campus Calibration, or ICC in short, is an alternative but less powerful calibration solution that can be executed by the onboard processor of the MTI. In order to learn more about ICC, we recommend reading our Magnetic Calibration Manual. Distortions of the second category cannot be compensated for by the Magnetic Field Mapper. The Active Heading Stabilization feature, or AHS in short, is designed for this purpose. AHS will be discussed in a separate tutorial video. The goal of the Magnetic Field Mapper is as follows. The Magnetic Field Mapper adjusts the magnetometer calibration parameters such that the 3D magnetic field readings have a norm equal to 1. We can easily visualize this using the inertial data plot in MT Manager. The plot on the left shows the inertial data recorded while rotating an MTI around all of its axes. Focusing on the magnetic field plot, we see that the norm of the magnetic field is unstable. This indicates that the local magnetic field is distorted. On the right, we see the same experiment performed after the magnetic field mapper has been used. The norm is now equal to 1 and constant. The magnetic field mapper has accounted for static disturbances that were attached to the MTI. It can now be used to determine a north-referenced heading with high accuracy. Now let's see the magnetic field mapper in action. As an example, we have mounted an MTI-300 onto a drone. The drone itself consists mostly of plastics, but it also contains a battery pack, which locally distorts the Earth's magnetic field. A magnetic calibration is therefore necessary. For the best results, we recommend performing the magnetic calibration in an environment where there are no external disturbances, for example, outdoors. Metal structures such as file cabinets or desks are typical sources of distortion, and their influence can degrade the quality of your calibration. Connect the MTI to your PC using a USB cable. Start the magnetic field mapper and scan for your device. After your device has been found, click Next and choose your logging directory. During the calibration, a log file will be written to this folder. Finally, click Start to initiate your calibration. You will see a screen with a load bar, indicating that the magnetic field mapper is gathering data points. On the right, all magnetic field data measurements are plotted as a 3D point cloud. A sphere with a radius of 1 indicates the ideal calibration surface. The key here is to rotate your full application, in this case a drone with an MTI, in as many orientations as possible. The more orientations you cover, the better your calibration will be, although this is not necessary. For instance, a two-dimensional calibration may be sufficient if your drone will not reach roll and pitch values larger than plus or minus 30 degrees. If you are using the MTI to track the motion of a car, then you can simply drive two or three full circles while recording calibration samples. This will result in a pure two-dimensional calibration. Once you have collected a sufficient amount of data, click Process. The Magnetic Field Mapper will run its calibration algorithm on the dataset, and a results page will show up. The first result to note is the plot on the right, showing the magnetic norm before the calibration, in red, and after the calibration, in blue. We can clearly see that in contrast to the red line, the blue line is stable and close to 1. 
Further down, other statistics are shown, including an indication of the quality of the calibration, summarized as either good, acceptable, bad, or fail. The amount of data points used by the algorithm. The mode, which can be either 2D or 3D. The status, which indicates whether the calibration has been written to the memory of your device, and statistical parameters for the norm before and after the calibration. Statistics that are more detailed can be found by clicking the Advanced Results button. The calibration is not saved in the onboard memory of the MTI unless you click Write to Selected Devices. After this, you are ready to use the MTI, or you can repeat the calibration in order to see whether you can further improve your results. As a reference, we will shortly discuss two example reports for different applications. The first example is the calibration of a robotic ground vehicle. Its body consists of a lot of metal plating and some large battery packs, of which the effects are clearly visible. During the calibration, the vehicle drove two full circles. Due to the strong distortions, the norm before the calibration is nearly sinusoidal and contains a large offset. The norm after calibration is constant and equal to one. This example shows the report for a consumer drone. The calibration was performed using a data set that was recorded while the drone was flying around. Again, the norm has been mapped to one. The noise that remains on the blue line may be caused by the onboard electronics of the drone. These distortions are not constant, and therefore they cannot be calibrated for using the magnetic field mapper. We have reached the end of this tutorial video on magnetic calibration. If you have any questions or if you need help with your application, please visit us at BASE. BASE is a growing knowledge base on which you can find frequently asked questions and a community forum with ActiveXN support staff.